Hi, everyone. So today we're going to be looking at lesson number 37 for our ABCs of God. And before we start, why don't we pray together? So dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much again for this time that we have for Sunday school. Uh, we get to learn more about who you are um, and how much we need you. Thank you for giving us the gift of your word and all of your teachings and all of the parables of Jesus that we get to learn more about how to find you and seek you in our lives. I pray that you would help us to listen and to learn today. And I pray this in Jesus name. Amen. So today's lesson is all about seeking God. So seeking is like looking for something. And we're going to learn all about how we can look for different things to help our needs and how this can help us think about learning to look and seek for God. So to start, we're going to do a little bit of a matching game, okay? So at the bottom here, you can see we have five different cards for five different things that we might look for in our day. So let's start with the first one, if you're tired. Now, if I were tired, I would look for a bed so I can get some rest. Our next card is if I were sick. If I were sick or if you were sick, what do you think you would look for the most? Food, jacket, friends? If I were sick, I would look for a doctor because that's what I need the most when I'm sick. I need a doctor who's going to help me stop being sick, who's going to help me to be better. If I'm lonely, I would look for, that's right, I would look for my friends. When you're lonely, your friends are the best thing to help you out. If I were hungry, I would look for food. And food is what I need the most when I'm hungry. It's my body telling me that I need food. If I'm cold, yes, I would look for a jacket if I were cold. Because what I need when I'm cold is something to keep me warm. Now, so for all of these, if all of these needs, I can be more desperate for some of these things at some times than other times. Let's take the example of being cold. I know that sometimes you can feel just a little bit cold or can feel extremely, extremely, extremely cold, right? Especially here in Canada. Think about all the different jackets you have. Now, if you're in school and you're feeling a little bit chilly from the air conditioning, you might look for a light jacket, but you could also maybe wait until the end of the class to find something warm. But if you're in the middle of winter in January and you're stuck outside in a blizzard like this one, you can see all the snow falling down and the wind is super cold and hard, then you're going to be desperately looking for a jacket. You're going to need that jacket desperately and you're not going to be able to wait you're going to be able to you're going to have to look for the warmest jacket as fast as possible if I were in a blizzard like this I would be desperately looking for a jacket to keep me warm so think about how these two different ways of feeling cold and two different needs that we have the more desperately we feel a need the more desperately we need to look and find and seek the right thing to help us so in the Bible, in the book of Luke, Jesus told a story about two men. And these two men both had the same need, but I want you to listen carefully and see if you can tell me which man was really, really desperate and why. So you can read this story for yourself or with your parents in Luke chapter 10, verses 10 to 14. And I'm going to read it for us here. So it says, two men went up into the temple to pray. One was the was Pharisee and the other was a tax, tax collector. <laughs> the Pharisee standing by himself prayed thus, God, I thank you that I'm not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I get. But the tax collector who was standing far off could not even lift up his eyes to heaven, but he beat his breast saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. 
Are we listening carefully? What man seemed to be really, really desperate for something? Was the Pharisee who was able to list patiently all of the things about himself? Or was it the tax collector who was crying out to God and beating his own chest? Now we can see from the story that the tax collector was desperate for something. He knew he was a sinner and that he desperately needed God's mercy and forgiveness to save him from his sins. The tax collector was desperate for help and that's how he prayed. He hated his sin and wanted to repent, to turn away from sin and to turn to God. And he knew that only one thing could help, depending on God's mercy for forgiveness. Jesus said when he told this story to his followers that the tax collector went home forgiven. He was able to find the answer to his problems, to his need, to what he desperately needed. Now remember that the Pharisee was also a sinner, just like the tax collector, but he didn't see and recognize that he was a sinner and he wasn't desperate in his prayers. He wasn't desperate for God's help because he didn't see or think that he had any problem or need for God. So in his prayer, we see that he wasn't even looking for God's forgiveness. And Jesus tells us in the story that the Pharisee was not forgiven for his sins. So just like the tax collector and the Pharisee were both sinners, I am also a sinner, and so are you. And we talked about this in some of our other lessons. And we know about God's wrath from our lesson on the letter W. So because I'm a sinner, I deserve God's wrath and punishment. And in order to save myself from this wrath, or save myself, be saved from this wrath and punishment, I desperately need forgiveness. And knowing that, what should I look for? Remember a game from the beginning of the class? Could finding more friends help me, or money, or toys? No, so there's only one match for this. And there's and that is a deliverer, someone who can save me from our sins. But who is that? We know that there's only one deliverer who can answer for our sins. And that's Jesus, the son of God, a man who never sinned, who sacrificed himself to save us. So we know that for our sins, we need to seek Jesus for forgiveness. Now, like the tax collector who prayed to God for mercy and forgiveness, we need to seek God to save us. Seeking God means experiencing a desperate need for God's forgiveness and calling out to Jesus to save you. Remember how desperately we were looking for a jacket if we were in the middle of a blizzard? We knew that we were desperately cold and desperately in need of a jacket or something to keep us warm. Now, do you think that I could have waited a couple of days out there in the blizzard to look for something to keep me warm? Or what do you think it would have happened if I couldn't see that I needed a jacket and I thought that I could just warm myself up by myself? I could just whip out a few jumping jacks and I would be fine. Or what if I decided that hmm, I'm too tired to go look for a jacket today? Maybe I'll take a nap or I'll just wait a couple of days and see if I feel like getting one later. Do you think that would have been okay? What would have happened? Well, I would have frozen to death. It was too cold for me to think that I could not have a jacket and be okay. Now, what about our sins and our need for a deliverer like we were talking about? Do you think I could just maybe seek Jesus when I feel like it? Or maybe I don't need him right now. So I can just wait until later to ask for God's forgiveness. No. Of course not. In the story, the tax collector was desperately seeking forgiveness. And that means that he was crying out to God in prayer for mercy as soon as he realized it, as soon as he could, because he needed God so desperately. And we need to realize that our sin is sort of like being stuck in that terrible, terrible blizzard. In fact, it's even much worse than being stuck in the cold. So when we're trying to look for God to help us in our sin, we need to think 
feel, and act in ways that show we are desperately seeking God's forgiveness. Like the tax collector, if you desperately seek Jesus and call on him and ask for forgiveness, he will save you. We see this in the Bible. In Jeremiah 29, verse 13, it says, You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. And Romans 10, verse 13 says, Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So you can trust that this is true, that if we realize our desperate need for God's forgiveness and we seek him with our whole heart and call on the name of the Lord for forgiveness, that we will be saved. So that's everything for our lesson today. I hope that you remember a little bit about the story of the tax collector and the Pharisee and that you have some questions about what it means to seek God. Um, I'm going to pray to finish and that's everything for today. Dear God, thank you so much that you recognize our need for a savior and that you've made a way through your son Jesus that we can all be saved and be near to you. I pray that you would help us to understand these things, that we would see our really, really desperate need for you and for your forgiveness. I pray that um, you would help everyone who is listening today to hear these words to, um, from the Bible and help us to understand it and to um, know that it is true. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for listening. I'll see you guys again later. Bye. Hey, my kids. Another very, very happy Sunday to all of you. So today we're going to be singing a couple songs together, and I'm super excited. So let's dive right in. So the first song we're going to be singing is called Peace Like a River. And I'm sure a lot of the parents and a lot of the kids know this one, and it's a beautiful song. So the actions are, I've got peace like a river, joy like a fountain, and love like an ocean. So you got those actions now. You have no excuse not to do them. So get up and get moving. Let's get started. I've got peace like a river. Let's try it. from you guys. So pat yourselves on the back if you sang along with that. Way to go, guys. So here we go. We're into our second song. This song is one of my favorites. It's so beautiful. It is called Our God is an Awesome God. And what an amazing truth to sing as you go into your day. So everybody wiggle it out. You know, we always wiggle out before the second song. So you guys can just sing along. And everybody has their own actions to this song. So if you have actions that you want to do, Go ahead. <clears throat>
All right, so those were super fun to sing together, guys. You did an awesome job. I will see you very soon. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your Sunday. Bye, my kids.